Howdy everyone, it's Luxball Gaming, and today we're going to be taking a look at my expert push with Jelson and the Great League. Jelson was a Pokemon I wanted to try out because it got overall what's seen as nerfed. Now Surf, one of the move updates this season, got a rework where its energy was increased by 5 and its power was increased from 65 to 75. So typically this is kind of a nerf overall because Pokemon like Jelson and Lantern used Surf as a bait move. So this move now overall takes longer, so it makes some Pokemon perform slower. But luckily they did compensate it with a power buff, so it's not like it just got an entire nerf overall. And Surf is definitely a pretty good charge move. Now I want to take Jelson for a spin because I thought it could be a good core breaker for like Toxpex Diggersby if people are still running that. Now of course Jelson isn't going to be that good into the Diggersby, but like it does have at least Surf. So it's pretty flexible damage Pokemon overall. The teammates I wanted to use was going to be a Bomb Snow. The non Shadow is nice just because adding bulk to this team, especially considering the third Shadow Machamp, is quite nice. Icy Wind is utility for your backline and to control lead matchups, which switch with Shadow Machamp and Jelson is also pretty good. Jelson and the Abomb Snow pair extremely well. I honestly wanted to run Azumarill, but I've definitely ran that team before, and it's been a very long time before I've run that team again, but Azumarill's kind of a common pick in the meta, and also I kind of don't want to just get trapped by Toxpex, which then when you consider Shadow Machamp, that also can get trapped by Toxpex. Yes, it has Stone Edge, but Toxpex just throws a charge move then. Anyways, talk about Shadow Machamp. It was supposed to be the safe switch of this team, which it actually worked quite well, mainly because I didn't see any Claude Sire. Because Claude Sire was basically the entire reason I would run Shadow Machamp in the lead. Now with this team, I was barely able to go positive and hit expert rank. My sets were a 4-1, which was able to get me above expert ELO. 1-4, which tilted me back, but I still like made somewhat positive into the ELO I had, and then I had a 3-2. I can recommend this team because I definitely could have had more wins, because the second set I played this, I just played horrendously. And I was trying to play as well as I can, just trying to get to the 2800s, which I definitely could have done if I didn't play so horrendously the second set. And also, spoiler alert, I played even worse after trying different Pokemon, and I'm below the 2600s, so when I upload the next video, you're going to see why like my ELO is way lower. Now, accessibility-wise, Snover, I think it's in Shadow Roster, so I would definitely get a good one. And you can easily run Weather Ball onto the Obama Snow. Shadow Machamp, also in Roster. Get it while you can. And then Jelson. Right now, at least previously, the female form was spawning in the wild for the Halloween event. Hopefully you got one, because... I can understand it wasn't a priority to get one, so basically if you don't have one now, you're definitely going to have to wait a while. Now without further ado, let's take a look at my expert run with Jelson in the Great League. So this opponent is very core broken by the Obama Snow, which I guess is pretty fair because they were also running some spice, Shadow Flygon. I went for an Icy Wind, I'm fine that they no shield because the utility just means Jelson is going to have much more HP in this matchup, and if Shadow Flygon comes into it, even the Jelson will leave its mark. Also, if the opponent just happened to shield a Energy Ball, no, an Icy Wind bait, we basically would have just won this game on the spot. So they come back in with the Shadow Flygon, they do shield the Shadow Ball, but I'm able to make a Surf and it almost puts them into the red HP range. I know this wasn't enough for like anything major like a stone edge but i figured they're pretty weak to the obama snow so i'm gonna shield their final pokemon is a shadow fortress a shiny shadow fortress at that which if they have mirror well if they have mirror shot and rock tomb those are both super effective but it has no fast move pressure so uh, it's a very weird matchup between the obama snow and the fortress so they try catching an Icy Wind onto a Zoom Roll, but we're able to Energy Ball it. And now we just get an Icy Wind onto the Shadow Fortress before our Obama Snow goes down. I come in with my champ. I make a bit of a clunky switch. I get the catch. 
I don't know if the catch was necessary to win the game, but opponent just concedes after that, as when we do get the catch, they can't win anymore. Next game, Shadow for Alligator versus our Bomb Snow. So very weird matchup. We have Energy Ball, especially like this is even a weirder matchup because we get denied. We have to land an Energy Ball to do any meaningful damage. They honestly have more fast move pressure than us, but they are going to switch to try to make a catch on an Energy Ball, which would be Neutron Clodsar, but we're able to go for the Icy win. And then I try catching a move. I don't get it, but like they're still throwing energy. They also throw in bad timing, so I get a full hex through. So I can take advantage of that. And now I'm going to go for the Surf here, which I think is just exactly enough to knock out in that HP range for the Claude Sire. They come in with Shadow for Alligator, and they're going to go for a Hydra Cannon, but it's not going to take us out. So this Shadow Ball is going to get a lot of damage or a shield. And Shadow Machamp loves shield advantage. I'm just going to let myself get farmed down. Switch advantage with the Bomb Snow and Machamp. I don't think it really does anything, but switch advantage having it sometimes is, is nice. So I'm going to shield. They are attack drop, but it's still going to do a lot of damage. Their final Pokemon is Diggersby, and let's just go to work with Shadow Machamp. So this first cross chop does over 50%, and then we just have the next one at the ready, which is going to take out the Diggersby. It's extremely bulky. No one cares. And then we just have the last cross chop very fast already to take out the Shadow for Alligator. Next game, a Bomb Snow into an opposing Shadow Machamp. And this is basically the worst lead you could see. If this was a Pangoro, well, I guess that would suck for the gel scent. But since it's Machamp, we can't use our own Machamp because we'd be down energy. So this, this really sucks. We do get a shield with the Icy Wind. But this still just sucks because luckily my opponent doesn't overfarm much here. But if they overfarmed, we would have been in a horrendous spot. I come in with Jelson and they're switching into a Dunsparce, which is really helpful right now because we need all the help we can get. I'm going to overfarm as much energy as I can in this matchup right before they reach that second draw run. So this cross drop will take them out. I think they could still outpace us, but they actually do come in with a Claude Sire instead of the Shadow Machamp. And I'm just going to go for these cross chops. I was thinking about going for a Stone Edge here, but that would allow them to overfarm more. So cross chop after cross chop after cross chop, and was that a CMP tie? So... Look how much damage Shadow Machamp just did to a Claude Sire, one of the best walls to the Shadow Machamp. Do we have a chance of winning this game though? So I'm over farming as much as I can with the Jelson, avoiding a charge move onto the Claude Sire. Now I just have to hope I can get to enough surfs. Shadow Machamp already has a stone edge, so this is looking quite bleak. I think this is going to be a loss if they have residual energy, which is of course one of the downsides of the nerf Jelson. Yeah. I mean, I guess we would have lost this game, but it just shows you how close it made because the opponent wasn't playing very optimally. But goes to show, a quicker surf can definitely win games, although a more powerful surf can win games as well. Next game, opponent is just disrespecting a bomb snow, as a bomb snow is going to be other grass types, and then they're switching in an electric type versus grass type. I can't really switch out however yet. I go for an Icy Wind onto the Shadow Ampharos and I'm switching into Machamp and look at this. Lightning speed I get to the Cross Shop and this just takes out the Shadow Ampharos. Now I'm expecting Superior to come back in and I'm just going to go for the Cross Shop at 5. It's most likely they're over farming but I don't want to just lose this free Cross Shop because look at that. That's some very good damage. Just a neutral Cross Shop. Alright, Shadow Machamp did very good. So now, coming back in with the Bomb Snow, their final Pokemon is Bastodon, so apparently Shadow Ampharos is a Shadow Machamp bait out. But luckily we have Jellicent. Man, Bastodon had its Smackdown nerf, now it had its attack drop, and it's now just in a drowning matchup versus our Jellicent. Like, Bastodon actually could put up a reasonable fight here, but with the Smackdown nerf, it's just, well, way better for type advantage matchup Pokemon that are actually supposed to win against Bastodon, but previously couldn't before because Bastodon was stupid. Look at this, we're able to survive two Stone Edges, because if Smackdown wasn't nerfed, all those added Smackdowns with two Stone Edges just knocks out. I predict my opponent was going to go for a combo play there, or well, I was going to go for a combo play, so I don't switch, and then they just force their energy on a critically low HP Jellicent. And now a bomb snow is going to clean up the Bastodon for the win. I felt like that game was a little bit closer than it needed to be, but definitely is still nice to take the win. 
Next game, a bomb snow into non-shadow drift blim. So opponent switches into a polyrath, which is a blast from the past. So we're going to respond with Jellison. A kind of another blast from the past, which is pretty funny just looking at this matchup. This is a matchup that's definitely common last season where Jellison was very good pick to destroy polyrath. And then here we are again. So they're going for Icy Winds, and I'm going to do a bit of a fancy play here where I'm going to go for an Undercharge. I want energy for that Drift Blum in the back. They are going to reach another Icy Wind, but having this energy is going to be nice. Actually, I like this play even more because they get less farm. I come in a Bomb of Snow, and their final Pokemon's Annihilate, but another Blast from the past, which is pretty weird because they're just going to get a big counter farm down here. Honestly, am I going to shield this? Oh, man. I really hate this shield now that I'm looking. Okay, never mind. I reached the energy ball. It's possible I would have survived on 1 HP. Because I need a lot of damage. They're obviously going to shield. And like Shadow Machamp gets completely crushed by Annihilate. I'm able to call a Night Slash. And now we just have our Shadow Machamp and a Jelson versus a Drift Blim. I thought my loose comb was baiting here. So I go for Stone Edge. And then I try to combo play. But they anticipate it. Suddenly, this game doesn't seem so clear anymore. And in fact, I might lose. Look at that. Shadow Ball just doesn't KO now. And they get the farm down. Luckily, I'm three away from the cross chop. Triple resisted. This is still going to knock out. But they still had a 1 HP Annihilate in the back. That game, my opponent definitely played very well. Because I feel like I should have won that game. But they were able to play very well to the point where they were able to get a tie. I'll take a tie. But I definitely think, once again, I should have won that game. But at least I didn't lose it. Definitely not one of the worst games I played, but still pretty bad. Next game, a bomb snow into low kicks. So this sucks because, like, I mean, the low kicks, when I played against them, none of them went for the X scissor immediately. I guess it plays around a catch, but if I was the low kicks player, I would X scissor immediately. So they go for the X scissor that time. I try no shielding there in case I call a trailblaze. Now we have Shadow Machamp into the low kicks, and I'm pretty sure Machamp wins CMP. Not sure if it's IV dependent or not. They have Toxapex. We could stay in, but realistically, switching is the best play. And then their final Pokemon is the Azumarill, so Jellicent should just be in a winning position in a 1v2, especially with the 2 shield advantage. And then we're just going to shield these play roughs. This is just going to be a pretty long battle of us just throwing, you know, fast moves, which are 3 turns and 1.5 seconds. Shadow Ball is able to land. Play roughs easily going to deal the most damage. So we shield up the next play rough, and I'm just going to keep farming in this matchup. I think a bad Azumarill, honestly, would faint to the Hexes and two Shadow Balls, but my Hexes are just not enough. Honestly, I don't think I should have thrown this Surf here. Like, if I take a play rough, I just over farm more. Once again, things don't seem so clear now. They have a play rough, and those two Pokemon, the Azumarill and the Toxpex, they are bad against the Jellison, especially with two shields, but they put in a lot of work. I need to reach another Shadow Ball, but they're going to be just able to outpace us. So now I need two Cross Chops to win. So the Jellicent finally goes down, and then I just need to over farm enough. I had the back-to-back -back Cross Chops, and I threw this game away because apparently I miscounted on Tox Packs. I don't know if I'm crazy or not, but like the way I was playing it, like, so it's obviously 10 to the Sludge Wave, and then like it's 7 to the Brine, but... They went to like 6 and then got the brine somehow. But when I got the double cross shop, I should have just thrown it to win the game. So that was definitely stupid on my part. I don't know where we're at in this game, but we have Shadow Machamp into a Dunsparce. Very dominant matchup. I could have thrown this move on alignment and just got another shield or just the knockout. But what fun would that be? I figured they're not going to have a lot of fast move pressure into Machamp. Which is funny because now I remember they have Gastron. But we have so much energy that they're not going to get that many, many mud slaps. So we have the second cross shop, I believe. And this is going to get the shield. I'm going to throw this next cross shop on alignment. If this gets the knockout, this is an okay play because we don't take the fast move damage. Their final Pokemon's a Tox Specs. And then we have Jelson to trap the trapping Pokemon Tox Specs for the win. Next game, we have Abomasnow into Azumarill. So a pretty good matchup as they don't really have any good charge moves into us i mean they have play rough but like it's not that good into us they switch into a rangaroo so we have to stay in here because jelson is only going to deal like single resisted damage with hex and then surf 
Oranguru has better charge moves, and then Oranguru also would just quickly make work of the Shadow Machamp. So I'm going to go for Icy Wind here. I think I threw an alignment here. Luckily, I'm not going to get punished because I could just throw on alignment here because they do have another Brutal Swing. This is going to get the knockout, and luckily we do have another answer for that Azumarill in the back. They come in with a Ferrothorn, so I do need to keep Switch Advantage, so I do need to let this farm down happen. So we get an Icy Wind, so this is going to lower the damage output, and then they finally pivot back into the Azumarill, and now we have the favorable alignment we need. And they don't have much of an advantage. Shadow Ball is going to connect onto the Azumarill. We already witnessed that the Hexes and Shadow Balls are just not enough to knock out Azumarill. But it's kind of hard for them to now bank a charge move for the Shadow Machamp, especially since they don't know we have it yet to win this game. So they're throwing another charge move. We're just letting this go because we know they have a um a move onto the Ferrothorn. Now they throw a charge move. This is amazing. So now we just win the game with Shadow Machamp. An opponent knows that and they concede. Funnily enough, that Azumarill was running Hydra Pump, which makes the Gel Scent matchup even more dominant. I believe this should be our final game, a Bomb's Note into Whisk Cash. Opponent switches into Dugong, and we have Shadow Machamp. So typing wise, this is amazing. But I ended up learning if the opponent goes for a drill run in the Zero Shield scenario, they can just win Switch. Luckily, I'm going to call an Icy Wind, and you're going to see how much damage I'm going to take. Barely winning Switch by the skin of my teeth. I'm only going to be able to get one cross shop off here. I don't remember if Stone Edge does more damage or not, but we still have favorable alignment. In comes the Talonflame, we're able to switch out before the Incinerate damage connects onto a Bomb of Snow. I figured I can just win this game no matter what. I chose the harder way. Well, I guess it's not really choosing, but I basically risk it the harder way. We're going to get both shields with the Surf here. And thankfully, because they Brave Birded, they're going to basically get knocked out by an Icy Wind. Like, their switch timer is going to be up, but... I'm just going to even shield the Whisk Cash because like we don't want them to get any fast move shenanigans. So when I energy ball the Whisk Cash, then I'm just going to have the energy for the Town Flame. And while it's not going to knock out, they're not going to have enough time to get the incinerate damage they need to take out our Bomb of Snow. So Bomb of Snow is going to be able to take out Town Flame for the win. So if you felt Jellicent was bad now because of the Surf nerf, I can definitely say Jellicent is very good into this meta, and it's still a pretty good Pokemon. And Jelson was more of an Ultra League Pokemon, so I do think it can also be good in the Ultra League as well. That's going to be it for today's video. I'm Luxball Gaming, and I'll see you in the next video.